This is section 11.4, definition of the derivative. We're going to talk about the slope of a tangent line. And this is the formula that you are given at the beginning, talking about the slope of the tangent line is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And this is at the point a f of line f of a f of 8. So let's look at a couple of things. Here's a picture of a curve and this line that goes through it that's called a secant line and you could find the slope of that where the same way we've been finding slope all the way through algebra. Here's a point a f of a and if we move this distance h we're now at a plus h comma f of a plus h you could use that and you could find the slope. Now when we have a curve like this and we want the tangent line that comes in at a f of a, well what we do is we, we pick that same point up here that was a plus h uh, at comma f of a plus h and we'd get one slope. If we move that point down and we do that slope we'd get another slope. We keep doing that and we get infinitely close to here. As we get close to here, we get closer to the actual limit. And so that's how we would think about it. Now, this is about calculus. This is, um, this is what happens and how we find the slope at a particular point because it's actually taking a limit and that is going to be our derivative. Our derivative is the slope of the tangent line, this line right here. So let's look at an example. So we have the equation f of x equals x squared plus 2. Find the equation of the secant line going through x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So remember the formula for slope would be y minus y over x minus x. We're not given the y's, so we do have to figure out what f of 2 is. f of 2 is 2 squared plus 2. f of 1, negative 1 is you plug in negative 1 and you get that. And then you have the 2 minus a negative 1. So we ultimately have 6 minus 3 over 3, which is 1. So the slope of the secant line is 1. Now, we just have the slope and we were asked to find the equation of the line. All right, so the points we figured out was um, negative 1 was 3 and 2 was 6. That's the y part. So choose either of the points. I chose 2, negative 6, you use the point slope formula, which just the formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Plug in your parts that you know. You know your slope is 1, your x part is 2, your y part is 6, and then you have your y and your x. You clean that up a little bit and you end up with y equals x plus 4. So here is the equation of the secant line. Now if we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1, we can use our TI-84 to find the derivative at x equals negative 1. So in this calculator we, have, we did math 8. We plug in the parts we know, the equation x equals negative 1, and we do get negative 2. So the slope of the tangent line is x equals negative 2. And again, at x equals negative 1, you can find out that y is 3. We had already done that, actually. So negative 1 comma 3 is our point. We use the formula, plug it in, and we get this as our definition of the as our equation of the tangent line. All right, a few things to remember. The notation f prime of x is read just that, f prime of x. The function f prime of x is called the derivative of f with respect to x. Okay. 
The process that produces F prime is called differentiation. So we've talked about that as the instantaneous rate of change, and that could be interpreted as marginal cost, revenue, or profit, uh, or velocity if you're talking about position on a line. So rate of change, it says we'll use that to mean instantaneous rate of change. So think about that as we look through the homework. Um, and I think, let's see, let's go here. Let me erase that because that got moved. The derivative exists when a function f satisfies all the following conditions at a point. f is continuous. It is smooth. It does not have a vertical tangent line. It does not exist when any of these are true for a function. If it's discontinued, if it has a sharp corner, like if it went like this, it would not have a derivative there, and or if it has a vertical tangent line. So remembering those, let's go look at our problems. If f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x minus 4, where is it not differentiable? Well, it would be not differentiable where there's a vertical tangent, vertical line. So if we take this bottom, set it equal to 0, we get that there's a vertical line, uh, asymptote boundary at x equals 4, and that would be the one place that that would not be differentiable. Estimate the slope of the tangent line to the curve. So we have this curve, and it looks like this is the tangent line. So that's just a linear function. So we could kind of estimate the slope. If For us to start at this point and get back to the line, if we went up 2 and over 3, we'd be back on the line right there. So our slope is approximately 2 over 3. Now, in this one, here is your function, negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. And we could do this in our calculator a couple of ways. We could throw it into um, the function, put it in, and do math 8, and come up with what the derivative is, and then find these. But we could do this by hand. The derivative of this one, remember 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, the exponent drops 1. So negative 2x plus, when it's the derivative of 6x, you just get 6, the derivative of a constant is 0. So here's my general derivative, my f prime, and then I plug in the three values that you're given, and you get 4, 2, 0. That would be, so there's your general derivative. Here it is at the three points given. This is like the example we did in the notes. For the given function, you're going to find two things, the equation of the sinkit line and equation of the tangent line. So here's my original function, x squared plus x. And I want to evaluate at x equals 2 and x equals 4. So the equation of the secant line, we need to find the y values that go with these points. f of 2, plug in 2, and you get 6. f of 4 is 20. So there we have two points. We have 2 comma 6 and 4 comma 20. If we find the slope here, it's 20 minus 6 over 4 minus 2. That's 14 over 2, or 7. Then you can choose one of the points. I chose 420. Doesn't matter, you get the same equation, whichever one you choose. y minus 20 equals 7 times x minus 4. Remember, we're using the point slope form. And clean that up, you get y equals 7x minus 8. So that's going to go in that box. Next, we're finding the slope of the tangent line. I mean, the equation of the tangent line, and so we do have to find the slope. So, knowing that our original equation was x squared plus x, so here was our f of x, so the derivative of that, 2x to the first, 
plus, remember this is an understood one, so we have one x to the zero, or just one. Now, f prime of two. f prime of two is, you plug in two to that, so that's five, and then pick one of the points that we had last time. We already chose the point, so I did two, six. Plug it in, and here is the equation of the tangent line. So now we have a function f of x equals 5 over x. If we're going to do the secant line, we need y values for these two x points that we're given. f of 2 is 5 over 2, f of 5 is 5 over 5. So now we have our two points. We can find the slope like we did before. We can choose one of the points, plug in, and we get our equation of the secant line. Now to find the um, equation of the tangent line, we have to take the derivative. If we're taking the derivative of this equation, it's better to write, rewrite it as 5x to the negative 1. That's the same thing as this. But when we can take 5f prime, it's easier. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5x to the, you take 1 away from that, you have negative 2. So it's either written like that or negative 5 over x squared. f prime of 2, we plug in 2, so we get negative 5 over 4 is our slope. Then we plug it in with one of the points, we get the equation of the tangent line. So same process each time. Now this one says use a calculator to find f prime of 2, 15, and negative 5. So doing the calculator and plugging in the function and the x values given, you can find f prime of 2, f prime of 15, and f prime of 5. Now I will say if your calculator is different and doesn't have this, it might look a little different. The older, older calculators, you might have um, n deriv and it is waiting for you to put the function comma the variable comma the um, the value that you're evaluating at. So you would put negative 6x squared plus 14x here comma x comma 2 and you would hit enter and you would get it. So I think that would if you had a TI-83 and older one that's what that would look at. All right, same thing on this one. You have 5e e to the x. So on math 8, you can do that and do it for f three, for x is 3, 14, and negative 5. It does say round to 4 places on this one, whole number here, 3 decimal places. So be sure you read those directions. That will help you make sure that you, you get it right the first time. Number 8. All right, we have an interval from 1 to 7. Where is this thing not differentiable? Well look here we have a sharp point. Remember we said it's not differentiable at sharp points so at x equals 3. At 4 it's not defined there, it is defined there so that's not differentiable and at 5 same thing. So 3 comma 4 comma 5 those are the places where the function is not differentiable. Number nine, identify which graph represents vol velocity and which one represents distance. So one of the things that I think makes it easier, your derivative is always one degree down. So if we start with a second degree, our derivative is a first degree. Now in this one, we're looking in a way to talk about the degree. How many turning points do we have here? We have one, two, three, Four. How many do we have here? One, two, three. This one is one degree lower, so this is the derivative. Velocity is the derivative of distance. So graph one is a graph of distance. Graph two is a graph of velocity. Okay. Number ten. Suppose the demand for a certain item is given by this function where P represents the price in dollars. 
Find the rate of change of demand with respect to price. Find and interpret the rate of change of demand when the price is 11. So what it's asking us to find is to find the derivative of the demand. So d prime of that is negative 8p minus 5. d prime of 11, you plug in 11 to that and you get negative 93. Okay. So, now the reason we don't put the negative in the box here, we've used the word decrease, so that takes care of the negative. So you don't want to put in a negative 93 when you've already used the word decrease. Okay, and I think that takes care of our problems for section 11.4.